All right. I'd like to talk about our renewable energy system. Once again, my name is Adam Humphreys, and I'm just going to talk about the wiring. You may be looking at this and be like, what? What are you talking about? It's really not that complicated. It's actually fairly simple. First of all, there's ground. There's negative. Right? All the black wires. The green wires are also ground. It just so happens that they're all tied together by the same bus bar here. All the greens and all the negatives. Just like in your AC breaker box, you have all the neutrals and all the grounds are tied together. And you're probably wondering, like, what? Yep, they're all tied together. They're all the same. That doesn't mean you want to necessarily use ground as a return. You don't want to really use the ground as a return. It's for an emergency return. In case something goes wrong, in case something goes crazy. So you don't want to necessarily use it as a return. I know Outback, oh, you know, you can if, if, if under the circumstance it's in a chassis. Like if this is, if they, all these boxes were in a metal case or there is a big metal plate, steel plate back here <coughs> and everything down here, the batteries and the inverter was also connected together, and the negatives, because the negatives of the battery, the negatives of the inverter, the negatives of the solar panels, and the negatives of the wind generator, the negatives of the charge controller, both of the charge controllers, they're all connected together. So if there's one metal plate back here, you could do away pretty much with all the green wires and all the black wires. All you have to really ground then is your back plate, which would be, and like I said, it's all these these wires, black wires, the green wires. The thing you need to ground, one of the important things is to ground your negative, and this is this green wire that runs out here to the AC breaker box. And it goes straight to a ground rod outside. Check your equipment. Ground your equipment. It's important. So that just leaves the positive connections. They're really not that much more complicated. They're just... They are... There are only three things that are sep electric, electrically separate that you got to be concerned about. And that's the solar panels, the positives of the solar panels do not mix with the positives of every, anything else, your battery or your wind generator. They are connected separately. That's what the charge controller box is for. Now, Missouri Wind and Solar Charge Controller. Um, pretty nice. We wanted to get the amp meters so we can find out how much we're making. It's pretty windy today. So we. this thing has actually been... Hovering, it hovers up to five, between five and twelve. Not bl producing a lot right now, but you'll probably see it jump up. Oh, there it goes, pretty high up there. So, what? So what's uh, in here? All it is is a, a relay controller. This thing controls the divert load. Now, what's the divert load? That's something special. Oh, you didn't mention that. What's that? All that is is a dummy load in case. You're not on the grid, or you become disconnected from the grid. The power needs to go somewhere. Instead of another method is instead of ruining your wind generator or ruining your batteries, just have an extra load somewhere. We had a these two wires go to a divert load, dummy load. They'll just go. The power will just go into that load instead of going into your battery batteries and ruining your batteries. Or instead of trying to break the wind generator and all the power going back into the wind generator itself and burning up the wind generator. You don't want that. No, you don't want it. I promise. So what do we have here? It looks complicated. I'm scared. I don't like it. No. No, it's not. Just look. Alright. You don't know. have to know the internal electrical connections in here that make this thing work. I know what they are. I like it. And I appreciate the design. But you don't have to know. It comes with a manual. <coughs> the manual is fairly straightforward. These are all the negatives here. I mean, they'll say this is the negative of the of the of the, the wind generators. This is the negatives of the of your battery, and this is the negatives of your solar. It, that, it, this is all negative. This is all tied together. You own these out. They're like zero ohms in between. It's all like I said. All the negatives are tied together. All of them. All of them are tied together. It's just more convenient to have extra terminals available. And it's also more convenient to keep them in the same place. So here's the positives of the wind generator. Here's the, po or the negatives of the wind generator. It's just more convenient to have that nice layout. So you don't 
confuse people when they're looking at what you got wired up. You could have just one big wire going to the bus bar, and you can have everything else going to the bus bar, and the negative bus bar. You can do that. That's up to you. That's your decision. It doesn't matter. All the negatives are tied together. So what's this? Well, this little wind generator we got, this little one guy that we have connected here, calls for a 10 amp slow blow. So we put a 10 amp slow blow in here. So here it is, all by its lonesome, connects to this um, breaker up here. You don't have to know that it connects to this breaker up here. Just know that this, you know, it's all in the manual. This is the breaker for the wind generator. This is the breaker for your diversion load. Just know that. So, and that's electrically separate. Wind generators. Mm -hmm. Positive going here. And then the positive of this, like I said, the positive is your charge controllers, and batteries, inverters all go together. They are fused in between. Mm -hmm. So let me uh, emphasize that right now. So the inverter goes up to here, goes to a 50 amp breaker. And the batteries go up to a small little piece. We got a small little battery bank. Because we don't have, we're not like using it for battery backup or anything. We're not dependent on it. We're mainly feeding back to the grid. So we have kind of like a static battery just to power everything. Everything up here. We only have like 12 amp hours. That's not much. But it gets the job done. So we have these three fuses. These two on the side here. Of these three, the two on the side are available. They're open. They're not connected to anything. So we have that tied together up here. These are all tied together. These are tied together up here at the top. And of course our charge controller here. This also goes to a fuse. It's connected together. You notice the trend here? It's all connected together. The 48 volt positives connected together. The wind generators aren't connected. The positives are the wind generators connected here. Connected in this box. They're separate. They're electrically separate. So all the positives like again, like the grounds, except for the solar and the wind directly tied together. Now, the negatives of the solar and the wind, like I said before, are tied together. They're negative. So, here is the solar panels. It's just as simple as the wind generators. They have, they go through, they go through a breaker. In this case, fuses. Here are the fuses. These are our arrays that are on the ground coming from a seven conductor wire we have here had this laying around so seven negatives seven positives and the ground or excuse me three negatives three positives and the ground and then our, our positive for our top panel our panel that's on the roof they all go through these fuses you'll see that these are connected together basically tied together You'll see two separate wires going here. The only reason why there's two separate wires, these wires are connected the same because all the positives of your solar panels arrays are eventually connected together. They must be the same, about approximately the same voltage though. So just keep that in mind. You don't want to have one panel array at 60 volts and another panel array at 80 volts. No, no, -uh. that doesn't work. That makes a pretty nasty imbalance. You don't want that. I keep them all the same. So these are just tied together, and here, just because we didn't have the room on the terminals, to tie them together here. So we just tied together, and the PV positive, and this charge controller. So simple enough, right? You might be thinking about, like, ah, I'm not sure about that. Oh, it's all labeled. <coughs> I mean, you might be wondering, what's this for? This is our Missouri Wind and Solar Generator. It goes to the positive here. You might have seen that, wondering about that. What's that white wire? That white wire is a result of us running out of red wire. Ah! Yes, it's just positive. So, it's easy enough to see, it's clear enough to see it. Oh, it hooks up to a positive terminal. It must have, it must be a wind generator or something. Yes, it goes up to our rectifier up here. We bring in the AC, it just rectifies to DC up here. Just goes straight down here. So, I've pretty much explained every wire that all the grounds are tied together solar panels are electrically separate but the positives of the solar panels are tied together if you be positive in your charge controller the wind positives of the wind generators are all tied together so the positives that your charge controller accepts positives of the outputs of your charge controllers and the input output of your inverter and your battery 
are all tied together positive, but they are fused in between. So that's what you got to keep in mind. Everything is fused in between when you're dealing with the positive. You want to uh, fuse between your solar panels, your charge controller, and your common positive. In this case, wind generator positives between. You want to break. You want to fuse or breaker between your wind generator positives from the wind generators to the actual charge controller to the then to the 48 volt positive common. And, and in your case, it may be 12 volts, 24 volts. We went with 48 volts for the obvious reasons that we wanted to use smaller wire. We didn't, we, we didn't want to have a bunch of loss. So that's why the wires are small, so small if you were wondering about that. Oh, those guys' wires are small! <laughs> yes, they are small. But they also have 48 volts DC on them. <laughs> Be careful with 48 volts DC. It'll bite you, not that I've gotten bitten yet, but there's always a first time. So that leaves one more thing to explain. See here, uh, these are just, this is just AC lines. This goes, to, this goes to our outback converter. It goes to the AC in, but since it's a grid tie, it, it also sends AC out. The AC out on your inverter, this means that if the electricity goes off, you'll be able to use the AC out on your inverter. In our case, since we have such a small battery bank, we can't use over 20 amps. We have 20 amp fuse on there. <coughs> so we would actually want to use fewer amps than the AC, just taking into consideration the, con the conversion efficiency. But I mean, you don't really have to worry about that unless... I mean, you'll, you'll figure it out soon enough if you try to use more than you can. The fuse blows and be like, oh, man, I guess I can't use that much. Yes, that's right. Simple enough. I mean, it's not, not like it won't happen. It'll happen to the best of people. So this wire, what's this wire here? That just goes to a fan. We got a fan on our rectifier. It gets a little warm. It helps up to the auxiliary output of the inverter. No big deal. We didn't have. We didn't really configure it. Just left it as is. The aux fan on the, on the inverter is on. Generally, it'd be used as a vent fan for your batteries. But our batteries are, like I said, 12 amp hours, so they're pretty piddly. No worries. No big deal. Mm -hmm. All right. I think that about covers everything I was going to say about this. I mean, oh man, 15 amps. Woo All right. So, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask and comment on the bottom there. Uh, I'll answer when I can. Alright then, thank you very much.